So as the one rental at a time brand and message grows, something that I feel like I owe my audience and obviously owe all of my contributors is to spend some money. So over the last five or six months, I've been putting together a brand new website called One Rental at a Time, which has a lot of amazing stuff about me. But the most important section is what I call Meet the Millionaires. And uh, Taylor, you obviously a significant contributor to this channel. You bring a view that is very different than my skill set. So thank you. Uh, so I wanted to show the site so people can check it out and then highlight your piece uh, because you've also made some recommendations. So I thought some people should see uh, what it's all about. Uh, you ready? Let's do this. I'm excited. Yeah, this should be fun. Uh, mine is also the least important section of this website, by the way, but we'll go through it nonetheless. <laughs> oh, that's not true. Come on. All right. So hopefully you can see that now. Again, one rental yep. at a time. Very simple. Again, these eight boxes. And the one we're going to talk about here is Meet the Millionaire. Folks, if you're listening to One Rental at a Time, please go to onerentalatatime.com and meet the millionaires. It is this, this is why I spent thousands and thousands of dollars was this page right here. So you can see all the people that come on and contribute uh, weekly or monthly. Uh, we're going to go right here to Taylor because I want you to see his bio. And more importantly, we're going to talk about books because I've asked each millionaire to recommend some books. So I thought I should ask them uh, to say, why were these important to you? So Taylor, this is what you sent the team. And uh, hopefully you can see that now. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Looks beautiful. The whole website. I mean, especially that landing page is amazing with that beautiful house in the background and just those simple overlays on it. Yeah. Amazing job. Uh, yeah. Uh, clearly none of my creation. <laughs> <laughs> You're the quarterback. Are... Yeah, I, I, I'm the check. I'm the GM, man. I'm the checkbook or the there owner. Go, GM. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but what I thought I would do here is uh, you have some books that you you felt uh, really were important to you. I thought maybe you could talk about why they were important. So if somebody wanted to check them out, uh, they could see which one were important. Maybe we go left to right, starting with sure. the psychology of money. Yep. So the psychology of money. Now, this is a book that has sold, I believe, three plus million copies. So this is no oh, wow. state secret. This is no diamond in the rough. Morgan Housel is one of the best writers that I've ever read. This is probably the most powerful book that a layman, any normal person out on the street can read and come away with tangible, actual stories about how to make themselves better at finance. And, and the reason why it's so readable versus just, hey, do this, 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 is that he incorporates a story for every single lesson. So there's 18 mm -hmm. chapters, I believe. There's 18 stories that each have a pointed lesson associated with each one of them. So the entertainment value is high, and then he backs into the lesson that comes out of it on the other side. I love that. So folks, if that interests you, and again, that's uh, one of the books that I picked up after Taylor recommended it. Uh, you can get it here. Just hit the buy now or buy here button. Next up, our good boy, Ray Dalio. He, he is, uh, he's a little verbose. This is a thick read. Yes, it is. Yeah. So this, uh, and I would couple this with a YouTube um, mm, video yes. from Ray Dalio that's 30 minutes long. And essentially what Ray does um, in a way that is very Ray-esque is he explains, and actually I'm, I'm looking up at CNBC right now. He's speaking on CNBC oh. um, <laughs> about debt that's issuance. Funny. But what he does really, really well is he breaks down what they call, what he calls the economic cycle. And he talks about different areas of the market, how they affect the economic cycle. And he talks about just in simplistic ways, the creation of money by the central bank mm -hmm. and then the depletion of money and the creation and the depletion, the creation and depletion and how it affects the economy at large. But he does it in a way that's very, very simple. This book is a little bit more detailed. That YouTube yeah. video is 30 minutes long and you come away with a really, really good understanding of what he calls what drives the entire system, which is yeah. credit. Yeah, I think I think when I look at these books, having read all, I have not read Annie Duke. That is the one I have not bet. So that'll be interesting. Having yep. read these, I would definitely start with the psychology of money if you were a novice. If you are comfortable with economic terms and and trading, uh, the Ray Dalio book again. Ray Dalio and Warren Buffett are the two guys. When I see them, you know, I'm going to definitely click on those. So I full respect to Ray Dalio, but this book is uh, it. It took it was hard. It was a it was a full mouthful to chew on. Yeah. Yeah. And that's coming from you who is incredibly, yeah. I mean, you read on this stuff every single day. Ray is, but for, for context, Ray is a gazillionaire that <laughs> uh, made all of his money at Bridgewater Capital, which yeah. is one of the largest hedge funds in the world. And one of the things that he did inside the largest hedge fund, there's a couple options there, is he created what he calls the all-weather tire. And exactly. it's a portfolio that can work throughout 
you know, good times, bad times, the economic cycle. And so all that bleeds through into the book and there's just an incredible yeah. amount of genius in there, but you got to know what you're getting yourselves into. And, and, and that's yeah. like a, you got to have a seven to eight level of understanding of finance to read that one. Yeah, I agree. Uh, let's talk about good to great. Why that was important for you with uh, Jim Collins. Yeah. Good to great is a phenomenal book. Um, Jim Collins breaks down, I think it's five different companies. Michael, you can correct me if I'm wrong there. I believe it's five. Um, The one that rings a bell right off the top of my head was Walgreens and he compares Mm -hmm. it against CVS. And what he looks at are companies that over a decade plus period of time, significantly, significantly outperform their competition. And so these are all established companies coming into this publicly traded companies. And then there all of a sudden is a meaningful gap that is a long-standing meaningful gap. And he says, okay, let's go explore that company and see what it is that drove the difference that actually is being presented there. And so a couple just real unique, easy things to understand is every one of them had a CEO that came up from essentially the factory line. Yeah, came up from the entire bottom of the entity, comes up through the roots, sees how every single piece of the business works. And then they also have this like, innate humility of themselves that they didn't go to Harvard and therefore and nothing against someone who goes to Harvard, but they didn't go to Harvard and get a C-suite job right out of college. They right. came off, busted it through the system and they garner the respect of their employees with that. And they garner an understanding of the business that is different than anybody that could step in from an outsider's perspective and learn. And yeah. it just goes to talk about the very simplistic, but very tangible differences that companies go from being good to Google, to great. Right. And then it's right there in the title. Yeah. And then the one book that I have not read, but uh, maybe I will pick this one up later today. Thinking in bets by Andy Duke. What's, what's that all about? Is this a poker analogy? Yes, it absolutely is. It's a card play analogy. So what she talks about throughout this book is just the understanding that risks have to be taken, mm-hmm. but they have to be calculated risks. So you have to understand, hey, I realize the likelihood of this playing out is whatever that percentage is, but what is the payout that comes on the other end of this? So if I think there's a 33% chance of this playing out, I need to more than triple my money on the backside to make that ROI make sense over time. And she just talks a lot about kind of Card playing in general, the ability to read situations based on cards, the probabilities being strict numbers that are in front of you. And then you take those numbers as your base case scenario and you try to be as diligent and as honest with yourself from an outside perspective, looking into it and saying, okay, because of this, qualitatively, I think this is a higher or lower probability than what the numbers say. And the quantitative is the basis of everything from probabilities. Yeah. So this is this I, again. I thank you very much for being a part of it. Uh, those books again, folks, uh, go check them out. Again, you can look at all the millionaires here. And just so you know, it's time to embarrass some people because not everybody has gotten me their stuff. So we're going to call out the lumberjack, Dan Bird, Jason, Adrian, Omar, Brian Lebo, Lance, and Stephen Dow. Guys, you owe me your stuff. You've now been publicly embarrassed. Folks, if you know any of these folks, leave them notes saying they need to get me their stuff because I have been asking for it for a month. This is not a new request. You have now been officially embarrassed. Taylor, thank you so they much. They got outed. Thank you so they much, Michael. Out. Thank you for not embarrassing me. <laughs> hey, man, I would. I had no problem embarrassing you, but you got me your data very quickly. So thanks, buddy. I appreciate it.